Hello everyone, this is the start of a series of videos I'm putting together to give you some drills and exercises that you can work on at home. Today I'm going to start off talking about the grip, because the grip is so important for two main reasons, being number one, it allows you to create distance, and number two, it allows you to gain control of that club face, which are two things every golfer wants when playing around the course. So today I'll talk you through step by step exactly how to position those hands on the golf club. Okay, so we've got three options for how your hands can actually link together at the back. The first one here is the baseball grip or the 10 finger grip, which is where your trail hand, which is your right hand, if you're a right handed golfer, just slides right up next to the lead hand there and you just grip it as you can see. The second option is the overlap option, which is my actual preferred option. It's just what I've always done, where you might just take the, the index finger of your lead hand the knuckle just off the club ever so slightly creating a little gap there and just pop that little finger of the uh, of the trail hand just into that groove and then the other three fingers just wrap onto the grip there that's the overlap grip and then the third option is the interlock grip where you actually take your index finger off and slot your little finger in there so that's the actual interlock grip the interlock grip is probably the most popular and the one that's most widely taught uh, then probably the overlap um, and the 10 finger grip isn't taught so much, uh, but can be used sometimes if someone can't really get used to the, the overlap or the interlock. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is the, the lead hand. So we'll split it into, into two sections, the lead hand, left hand for a right-handed golfer, and the trail hand, which is the, uh, the right hand for a right-handed golfer. And first of all, to get the lead hand on properly, we need to just make sure that we're holding the club face nice and square at the bottom. So to do that, get your right hand and just pinch the top of the club so that you, you're getting the club face at the bottom square to the target. So the leading edge would be at right angles to the target line. So just make sure that the club's in place and then we can start to place the, the lead hand onto the club. So what we're looking for here with the lead hand is the club is gonna run in a diagonal across the fingers. So from the middle part of the index finger up to the base of the little finger. So it's going to go from the middle part of the index up to the base of the little finger there and it very much sits in the fingers. Now be careful to not place the club in that diagonal with your hat with your palm facing to the sky too much so that you can check it because generally that is going to give you a, a weak grip. You need to make sure that your hand is just falling from your, your shoulders and just present your hand to the club as it would naturally fall here. And then from there, just place the club into that diagonal and let the palm just wrap over the top there. Okay, so once you've got your hand over the top, there's a couple of pressure points you need to look out for. One being the, the heel of your palm there, the heel part of your palm, that muscle there should be sat on top of the grip. So as we place it back over, you'll see that the heel of the hand, this part, just sits on top of the grip there. And that's how that sits nicely on top. Okay, so that's in place. The next part is the, is the, the thumb. And you wanna make sure that the, the underneath your knuckle there, that is the part that's actually sat onto the grip. If you have your nail too much on, the grip there, your thumbnail, then you're gonna see that it creates this separation here between your thumb bed and the, the club. Whereas if I push that knuckle down, then suddenly it all becomes nice and secure on top of the grip and you've got your heel, thumb bed, underneath the knuckle there, all nice and secure on top of the grip there. As you look down from the top, there's a couple of things you want to be looking for. If, if your hand is now in the right position, you should be able to look down and see two to three knuckles there on your, on your left hand there. Two to three knuckles uh, would give you a neutral to sort of strong grip. And then this line here that is in between your side of your hand and your thumb, that is just going to be running over your right shoulder. So you want to see that line there over your right shoulder, two to three knuckles on your left hand, and you, your hand there is in a good place. One more thing to notice 
is see how the, in the wrist there is, a, there is a bit of cupping there in the wrist at address. So your wrist doesn't start flat. At impact, you would have that wrist flat, that returns back into a flat position. But at address, there is some cupping there in, in the left wrist. Okay, so now onto the, the trail hand here, which is the right hand. So what we need to be looking for here in the right hand is first of all, you just need to find your lifeline, which is just quite a noticeable line there that just runs up through your palm and it runs through the two muscles um, of, your, of your palm there. These two muscles here and it runs up through the middle of them. And, and as your hand closes, you can see how those muscles tighten. So they'd be tightening on my finger there. Now that is where the, the left thumb is going to sit. So if we put the left hand back on, put that, those, that lifeline on top of the thumb and then position, and you'll just feel that the hand just sits, that thumb just fits into that groove there like a jigsaw. It just fits so comfortably. And once you've got that right hand over and in place, number one, you won't be able to see your thumb because your hand will be covering it. And number two, just look at how low down the club actually sits in your fingers. You know, for me there, it's sitting right down in the middle section of my fingers. You know, if I split my fingers into three, one, two, three, it's right down there in the, in the middle part. So it's really quite low down in the fingers of the, uh, of the trail hand. So it's in the fingers, wraps over, thumb slots into that groove there, and you're in a good position. Now, another thing to look out for is that V again, that line over the same shoulder. So over the right hand shoulder. So both of these lines are running up over the right hand shoulder. Now, another important part of this hand is the thumb and the index finger. Now, this index finger actually sits away from the middle finger slightly. It's very relaxed on the club, hardly doing anything, no pressure really. And it's like the trigger finger. It sits away from that middle finger. And the other part is that the thumb needs to sit back. So you, the last thing you want to do here is extend that thumb past the index fingers. You can see it. It's um, creating problems with the wrist there that we don't want. So we need that thumb sitting back behind that index finger there so that the... So as you do that, you can see how the, the thumb bed sits comfortably down onto the thumb. Again, you don't want to create this, this gap here because that's going to create problems in the swing uh, with you know just general connection of your hands and the grip. So make sure that thumb's pulled back, get that trigger finger down slightly. And a good reference is you might just be able to touch the, the fingertips of your index finger and your thumb, and that shows that you're in a pretty sound place there. So thumb back, trigger finger slightly down, and that's going to allow you to get that forward presser impact because if you've got that disconnection there then you, you can't really get that so right hand goes on trigger finger down thumb just sat back onto the lead thumb and you should and it should just feel really secure you know when you've got it right because it all just fits together lovely so that was a step-by-step -step guide of how to get your hands into a very very neutral position on the golf club However, there are some top players out there who play with a slightly weaker grip or maybe a slightly stronger grip. I'll just show you now an exaggerated stronger grip and an exaggerated weaker grip so that you know what we're talking about. So a grip that is too strong would look like this, where you can see too many knuckles on the lead hand and the trail hand just sits too much underneath the club. And a grip that is weak would look more like this, where the club's running up through the palm and the, the, the lead hand is too much over the top. So you can't see any knuckles, maybe one or no knuckles on the lead hand and the trail hand is too much over on top of the club. So those are two very exaggerated examples of a stronger and a weaker grip. And if your grip looks anything like that, then this is definitely gonna cause problems. However, if you do have a slightly stronger than neutral grip or a slightly weaker than neutral grip, then you can play good golf with it, as many top golfers do. You've just got to have other things going on in your swing to balance it out and that ensure that that club face arrives back into the ball square. So if you're a, an experienced golfer playing good golf and you feel you've got a slightly weaker or stronger grip, then it's not something you need to, to jump straight into. Um, however, if you are a 
if you're new to the game or you're a beginner or you do have one of those exaggerated versions of a stronger or weaker grip, then definitely follow that step-by-step -step guide there and get, that, get those hands onto the golf club in the most neutral place that you can. So having that sound grip allows you to do a number of things. You know, it enables you to just keep a secure connection between your hands and the grip. You don't want that club uh, losing connection with the grip and, and coming out at different points of the swing because that's going to create problems. It also enables you to hinge your wrist properly, which is a massive part of creating speed. It allows you to get that forward presser impact. Um, and as explained with the weaker and stronger grip, it has a direct impact on that club face opening and closing. So very, very important there to get something close to that neutral grip. Okay, thank you for watching this. I hope you found it useful. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.